Somebody there and say, Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's close our eyes for prayer. Present yourself unto the Lord. Tell the Lord you want this message to be of benefit to you. Let him hear you pray. Are you meditating? I said pray. That the Lord will speak to you. Speak through his word unto you. And the Lord will give you the heart to receive. The mind, the decision to obey. So that his word will not be in vain in your life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our Father, we do thank you for this retreat. And we thank you for this day of worship within the retreat. Thank you for reminding us that Jesus Christ came into this world to save sinners and aim to prepare us to walk in the path, in the way that leads to heaven. We're asking, Lord, that your word will prepare every one of us for that glorious heavenly city in Jesus' name. Help us not to forsake the way to heaven, not to choose another way that leads to another place, but to keep to this way that leads to heaven all the days of our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. Speak to your people this morning. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Somebody there shout, Amen. Amen. God bless you. You can sit down. We're looking at Hebrews chapter 3 Hebrews chapter 3 I'm reading from verse 1 Wherefore holy brethren partakers of the heavenly calling consider the apostle and high priest of our profession Jesus Christ Christ Jesus who was faithful to him that appointed him, as also Moses was faithful in all his house. For this man was counted worthy of more glory than Moses, inasmuch as he was built the house as more honor than the house. For every house is built age by some man but he that built all things is God and Moses very truly was faithful in all his house as a servant for a testimony of those things which were to be spoken after but Christ as a son over his own house Whose house are we? Whose house we are? If we hold fast the confidence and rejoicing of our hope firm unto the end. As we look at the message this morning, the higher way of the heavenly calling. You see from verse 1, Wherefore, holy brethren, 
partakers of the heavenly calling. We have to come into the kingdom before we can be partakers of the heavenly calling. We have to become one of the sons and daughters of the Lord before we come into the heavenly calling. And then it says, Holy brethren, the brethren who have turned away from their sin, from their defilement, from all the things of the world, and they have turned unto the Lord. And there is the unshakable assurance from the Father, from Jesus the Son, from the Holy Ghost, unshakable assurance through the life they now live that this is a changed life and then unshakable assurance that comes as a result of their neighbors saying there's a change there is a transformation and they can't testify to the fact that if any man be in christ is a new creature all things are passed away behold all things have become new those are the brethren and they are partakers of the heavenly calling it tells us in second timothy chapter one second timothy chapter one reading from verse nine in verse nine it says who has saved us and called us with an holy calling you see that it's a heavenly calling it's a holy calling the heavenly calling is associated with being brethren holy brethren and the high calling the holy calling is associated with those who are saved who have saved us cleansed us changed us turned our lives around uh, we're partakers of the holy calling not according to our words but according to his own purpose and grace which was given us in christ jesus before the world began heavenly calling holy calling all associated with our being saved born again redeemed cleansed forgiven set free from sin philippians chapter 3 reading here from verse 13 philippians chapter 3 verse 13 brethren i count not myself to have apprehended but this one thing i do forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before i press toward the mark of the price of the high calling of god in christ jesus here it mentions the high calling it's a heavenly calling it's a holy calling and it is a high calling all in christ and he puts a feet in the path of holiness in the path of righteousness that leads to that glorious city that is to heaven i say chapter 35 i say chapter 35 from verse 8 and an highway shall be there and a way and it shall be called the way of holiness that's what the new testament calls the way that leads to life eternal is the way of holiness the unclean shall not pass over it but shall be for those the wayfaring men the fools shall not err therein is saying that even though we're not that intelligent according to the reckoning of the people of the world even though we're not the most enlightened the most civilized the most educated and we're just that we fearing men and even the people of the world might refer to us as fools yet it says if we're saved if we know the lord 
if he puts her feet in the path that leads to heaven it says where those people were walking in the way of holiness verse 9 no lion shall be there it's not talking about the normal animal we call the lion it's talking about violent people you will not be there in the highway that leads to heaven it's talking about the soup are bossy and bully and over other people they want to tear them apart if they're not towing their way it's not it's not talking about the normal lion it's talking about those who are focused on force anger malice evil violence and it says no lion shall be there nor any ravenous destructive beast shall go up therein if you want to get to heaven you come to the lord and it touches your heart it transforms your heart it changes you from the inside to the outside and your life becomes that of the lowly meek and humble person it says it shall not be found there that is the lion and the ravenous beast but the redeemed shall walk therein those who are saved will walk therein those who are justified will walk therein those who sins have been forgiven and those sins have been taken away from them they will walk therein and they ransomed of the lord those who are bought with the price of the blood of the lamb the ransomed of the lord shall return and come to zion with songs and everlasting joy shall be upon their heads and they shall obtain joy that is the joy of heaven now that is the joy of crossing over and getting to heaven eventually they shall obtain joy and gladness and sorrow and sign shall flee away any amen from the church yeah. the higher way to the heavenly of the heavenly calling i'm going to look at number one the neglected way the way the lord is calling us to and many people religious people neglect that way and they choose ways for themselves and they think they will get to heaven by themselves they neglect the calling of god they neglect the gospel of christ they neglect the way that leads to salvation and the way that leads to the heavenly city and then they begin to find out for themselves if i do this if i do this if i do that maybe i will get there ecclesiastes chapter 10. ecclesiastes chapter 10 from verse 15. ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 15 the labor of the foolish wearies every one of them because he knoweth not how to go to the city the heavenly city he doesn't know how to get there and yet he's laboring he doesn't know how to get there and yet he's religious he doesn't know how to get to that heavenly city but he labors in tradition labors in so-called good works labors in self-righteousness and he labors in personal sacrifices and yet it says it wearies them every one of them because they do not know how to go into the city i'm looking at jeremiah chapter 6 i'm reading from verse 16. jeremiah chapter 6 verse 16 thus says the lord stand in the ways many ways where is a good way there's so many ways stand don't just rush on and take this way or that way don't just say because that's what i've been introduced to you find out by yourself in the word of god it says stand in the ways and see and ask 
for the old past for the old past what does that mean the same word of god revealed in old times not something modern not something uh, to entertain the people not something to just get in a crowd it says ask for the old paths where is the good way and walk therein not just to know it not just to discover it find it out the old paths and the good way and walk therein and you shall find rest unto your souls but they said tell me but they said tell me we will not walk therein they neglected the way of salvation they neglected the good way and the lord showed them i want you in heaven i want you to live with me forever but before you can live with me forever find out the old way find out the way of the ancient of days the way that the ancient of days himself has put in place and he said this is the way walk ye therein but he said no we will not walk therein verse 17 also i said watch men over you saying hakim to the sound of the trumpet but he said we will not hack him so we find there are people that they discover the way here on earth but they made up their minds no they were not going to follow come to jeremiah chapter 44 here i'm reading from verse 17 from verse 16 jeremiah chapter 44 verse 16 as for the word thou hast spoken unto us in the name of the lord we will not hearken unto thee these were people they called themselves by the name of god people of judah people of israel and the lord said unto them a servant jeremiah they even had told Jeremiah in an earlier chapter, chapter 42, go ask the Lord, whatever he says, come and tell us, and we will do it. Between that time and this time, they changed their minds. And he said, no, we're not going to do that anymore. Look at verse 17. But we will certainly do whatsoever sin goes out of our own mouth whatever we want to do that's what you call self-will they had self-will and he said we're not going to obey the word of god we're going to do whatever has come out of our lips verse 27 in verse 27 it tells us behold I'll watch over them for evil because they rejected the way of the Lord, the word of the Lord, the will of the Lord. Behold, I will watch over them for evil and not for good. And all the men of Judah that are in the land of Egypt shall be consumed by the sword that is in their rebellion they went back to egypt and when they were warned that's not the way come out of that way that's the way of destruction that's what we have left behind and we're told don't go back to egypt anymore they said we're going we're going to do whatever comes out of our mouth and it says i will consume them by the sword by the farming and there shall be an end until there be an end of them the lord had challenged them in various ways not to neglect the good way 
the way that leads to the very heart of God. Jeremiah chapter 18, reading from verse 7. Jeremiah chapter 18, verse 7. At what instant I shall speak concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom to pluck up and to pull down and to destroy it if that nation against whom I have pronounced turn from their evil I will repent of the evil that I thought to do unto them he said my way is the way of repentance the way of turning away from evil and the way of taking the new path which is the path of righteousness even though God said I would have destroyed them and I threatened them I will destroy them if they repent if they call upon the Lord and if they have this new life that I'm showing them then I will turn away from the evil that I thought to do unto them come to verse 9 and at what instant I shall speak concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom to build and to plant it if I promised a nation promised a community, promised an individual that I'm raising it up. I am building it. I am planting it. If they take my promise for granted and then they turn away from the good way, look at verse 10, if they do evil in my sight, that it obey not my voice, then I will repent of the good wherewith I said I will benefit them. The Lord expects that if we are going to get to heaven, and thank God we are going there. I am going there. Then we have to follow the way of the Lord. There is danger of just following religion the way of religion, the way of tradition, and then we forsake the way of the Lord. Like these children of Israel, the people of Judah, like they did. Hosea chapter 8. Hosea chapter 8, verse 2. Israel shall cry unto me, My God, we know thee. That's verse 2. They said, we know you, we know your ways, we are your people, you are our God, we are your people, my God, we know thee. Look at what God said in verse 3, Israel has cast off the sin that is good, the enemy shall pursue him. While Israel was professing, while Israel as a nation, while they were saying, we know God is our God, he is our Father, he is our Creator, he is our Redeemer, we have no other God, we have no other Father. But God said, Israel, you have cast off the thing that is good, and the enemy shall pursue you. Look at verse 12, actually, the evidence they forsook the right way. The evidence that they didn't follow the way of the Lord. Verse 12, I have written to him. Talking about the whole nation. I have written to him the great things of my law. But they were counted as a strange thing. And when you go to many church circles today, Many denominations today is like that. The Lord gives them the great things of his law about repentance, about restitution, about the narrow way that leads to heaven. And for them in those places, it's like a strict thing. 
the ministers even count that as a strength thing, and their members count that as a strength thing. And yet they say God is our Father, God is our God, and God is the one who is taking us to heaven. They say heaven, heaven, we're going to get there by all means. And yet I have reached into Him the great things of my Lord, but they were counted as a strange thing. In some circles, you're talking about healing, that's normal. In some circles, you talk about miracle, that's normal. But when you come to talk now about the new life of the believer, uh -uh, that's strange now. And there's some people that are getting into that mode of thinking, you know, you know what means? Miracle, miracle, healing, healing, deliverance. God is going to do this, God is going to do that. Even among our preachers, there are some that all we're looking for is manifestation of that demonstration of that but when it comes to the life of the christian the holiness without which no man shall save the lord that's becoming strange in some people in their understanding i have reached unto him the great things of my law but they were counted as a strange thing Look at the result in Osea chapter 4. Osea chapter 4, reading from verse 6. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. The knowledge of seeking the way of the Lord, following the way of the Lord, treading and walking in the way of the Lord. My people, they, they lack that knowledge. The knowledge of salvation, the knowledge of repentance, the knowledge of justification, the knowledge of a new life, the knowledge of the believer's character and comportment. It says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because thou hast rejected knowledge. It's not enough to just hear it. You must believe it. And you must obey it. It says, because that was rejected knowledge, I also will reject thee. That's the way of the Lord. If the Lord is going to accept us, if the Lord is going to count us for his people, we must believe and accept and walk in the way he has revealed the way of knowledge. But he said, because thou was rejected knowledge. I also will reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me. Thou shalt be no minister unto me. Thou shalt be no servant unto me. And thou shalt be no worker unto me. And thou shalt be no child unto me. Seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I also will forget thy children. He wants us to understand the way of salvation, the way of the gospel, is the way of repentance and faith in Christ. And if we reject that, then we have neglected the right way that leads to heaven. You will not reject. You will not neglect. You will not abandon the way of salvation in Jesus' name. Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 1. Let us therefore fear, lest the promise being left us of entering into his rest. Any of you shall seem to come short of it, lest you miss the way to heaven. And if you miss the way to heaven, what a great tragedy. Hebrews chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 1. Therefore, we ought to give the more honest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them sleep. It says, all the things we have heard, the gospel, everything we have heard, repentance, everything we have heard, believing of the lord jesus christ for salvation everything we've heard a new life in christ that comes as a as a result of the grace of god therefore we ought to give the more earnest heed 
to the six which we have heard, lest at any time, at the time when we have come over familiar with the way of the Lord, any time, at the time when we just decide to be careless, any time, at the time when we're not thinking about the Lord and His glory and we're thinking about ourselves, lest at any time we should let them sleep. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience, every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation as to come to the retreat? That's the number one thing you ought to make sure you have. So great salvation. As you listen to the word of God, these are the first thing you ought to make sure is intact in your life. So great salvation. And as uh, you say, I've been in the church even from a young age. This is something you need to check up. Make sure that this great salvation is still there. It says, how shall we escape? If we neglect so great salvation, which are the force began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him confirmed unto us by them that heard him what did they hear what did they hear they heard about the way what kind of way the narrow way to the heavenly kingdom the narrow way to the heavenly kingdom matthew chapter 7 in matthew chapter 7 reading from verse 13 enter ye in at the straight gate look at the gate watch over that gate measure that gate is it narrow straight you understand the word straight here is talking about narrow the other straight that has a gh that one is like straight straightforward but this one is talking about straight as narrow enter ye in at the straight gate this is the gate that will not take you and your sin you leave the sin behind before you can enter it's so narrow it will not take you on idol worship it will not take you and fornication it will not take you an adultery it will not take you and evil. It will not take you on occultism. It will not take you on disobedience. It will not take you on rebellion. You enter in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate. And broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be that go in there at many religious people. It's not something, um, you know, so, so uncommon. You find, you know, a camp there, another camp there, another assembly there. People in Nigeria, in every, almost every country in Africa, they're gathering together. At a time like this, at other times of the year, they gather together, gather together. But what gauge do they enter through? Is the broad gauge that takes everything. Come in with your fornication. Come in with your adultery. Come in with your polygamy. Come in with your rebellion. Come in with your stealing. Come in with your fraud. And once you can offer part of the money unto God, then God will overlook everything. That's a broad way. And it leads to destruction. And many, many, many there be that go in their heart. Verse 14. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way that leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. If you have found it, you are among the few. But the multitude, the majority of people, they go through the broad gate, wide gate, and the broad way. And then Jesus 1 verse 15, beware of false prophets. Who are false prophets? Those who tell you, come just as you are, and then stay just as you are. 
remain just as you are. Everything is all grace. The grace overlooks everything you did in the past, everything you're doing now, everything you will ever do. Grace overlooks everything, you know, and it promises you forgiveness, forgiveness for the past, forgiveness for the present, even the sins you have not committed. They say God has forgiven you already. They give you license to go on, keep on sinning. That's the false prophet. The prophet might be over there. The false prophet might also be here in our midst, assuring anyone. It doesn't matter. Don't listen to them. Don't hear about the narrow way. Don't hear about the straight gate. Beware of false prophets anywhere you find them, which come to you in sheep's clothing. But in what lay? There are many wolves. He shall know them by their fruits. He shall know them, not by their testimonies, not by their profession, by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns, of figs, of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit. If you are really born again, if you are a child of God, you'll bring forth good fruit. Change life, a transformed life, a life of love, a life of peace, a life of joy, a life of long suffering, a life of faith, of fidelity, a life of faithfulness, a life of meekness. If you were really a child of God, a good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit that saying uh, a really saved child of god will not continue in the works of the flesh a good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit shall be cut down, hewn down, and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits, tell me, you shall know them. Verse 21 is very important. Verse 21, very essential for us to understand. If we understood verse 21, 22, 23, will not be running about to places where they say they are performing miracles, where they say they are healing, and yet the word of salvation is missing, and the words of a new life is missing. You will not want to take something from them and then make them to have false hope that they are going to heaven because they healed you, because they prophesied to you, because they perform the miracle to you. Even deeper life members, they come to us here when they need healing. And so if we're not right with God, how oh, you see they're coming from deeper life and they're coming to us here. Even some of their preachers, even some of their ministers, they come over here. Okay, they say we're cultic. They say we're not tried, and they say we're not going to heaven. If we're not going to heaven, I will see that those deeper life ministers and members, they're also coming to us for hell. You deceive them, and you make them feel that they're doing the right thing. When you go to them, and you know they're not in the narrow way that leads to heaven. And you deceive yourself too. And you then you have something from the devil. If the devil is the one instigating them, using them, or preaching in them, and you receive anything there, you're receiving from the devil. And if you have the property of the devil with you, call it healing, call it deliverance, call it prosperity. If you have anything the devil has given you, and the devil is saying, now, make sure you talk about me in a decent way because i give you that from that angle i give you that from that source if he has his a property with you guess where you will spend eternity if you don't throw that thing back to them and stay in the narrow path that leads to heaven verse 21 
Not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. And the question you need to ask is, is that man, is that minister doing the will of God? Preaching the word of God without fear, without favor? You see, preaching the totality of the word of God. And then you turn the question back to yourself. Are you doing the will of God every day, every moment of your life? Are you doing the will of God every time? Or are you sometimes forgetful of yourself? You do your own will. You do the will of the flesh. You do the will of society. That's not the way of the Lord. Those who are going to follow the Lord to heaven, they are the people that do the will of God, the Father who is in heaven. Look at verse 22. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? That's what people are looking for. And at the end of this year now, it's got the year is running to an end. You will see prophecies and prophecies and prophecies. They prophesy what's going to happen to the country next year. They prophesy who is going to come up. They prophesy who is going to come down. They prophesy where water will come from. They prophesy where food will come from. They prophesy what will happen to Naira. They prophesy what will happen to the stock market. They prophesy about everything. And yet, talk about salvation, they don't understand. Talk about repentance, they don't understand. And talk about faith in Christ that gives you real salvation, they don't understand. And there are some people who might come to a retreat like this. And after the retreat, you are going to ask them, hey, speak a word into my life. Speak a prophecy into my life. The people that, you know, they crawl in, they crawl out, they come to deeper life, and it appears deeper life is their home church. And then, but they say, eh, when I want, uh, you know, prophecy, somebody to speak something into my life, I go there, I go there, I go there. What deception. You're deceiving yourself. It says many, not only a few, many will say to me in that day, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils. In thy name we have cast out devils. In thy name we have done many wonderful works. And look at the answer of Christ. The response of Christ to that. And look at what Christ will tell them. And the point is, he'll be telling them this when it will be too late to make any correction. Too late to repent. Too late to come back to the world and then do what is right so they can get to heaven. They're already at the brink of getting to heaven as they thought. And they thought, when I get there, I'll tell you what I've done. Prophecy great works miracles and all those various things casting out devils anointing with oil driving away all those evil things from their lives and i will tell him i have the anointing that breaks every yoke and they look at verse 23 then will i profess unto them i never knew you depart from me ye that work iniquity. And I want to ask if you are here and you say you specialize in prayer. Prayer is your key. And people come. They come to you after the service. Cast out devils. Cast out devil. Prophesy. Prophesy. And then begin to say some things. This will happen. This will happen. That will happen. Or maybe they come to you in your house. And he recognizes you because you are a member of a particular team. Prayer is the key. And you have forgotten holiness. When those ladies come to you, you know the lost in your heart. You know the way you lay hands on them. And you know the way you, you know, do whatever you do with them. And you know in your heart that is not part of the prayer. 
you know in your heart it is because of the way that lady looks to you that's why you're doing that when men come you don't do that when men come for the prayer you don't do that and when uh, women come that are not so attractive to you you don't do that but when those who are attractive to you when they come you know what you do you know what you do and you say you are casting out devils if you don't repent that is not the way to heaven look at verse 23 i will then when i profess unto them I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. I pray that all iniquity will get out of every one of our lives in Jesus' name. We're looking at Luke chapter 13. Luke chapter 13. And if you're a real child of God, if you're sick, God will heal you. I said if you're sick, God will heal you. And if you are, if the sickness is still there, we heard about Job last night. I will hold on to my way. Shall we receive good at the hand of God and not receive evil? And when the wife was fed up and so tired about the condition and said, Cause God and die, it didn't backslide, it didn't compromise. Okay, if you, are, if you know, we have tried this, we have tried that, and the thing is not working, let us go here, let us go there. I pray you will not die in the house of a herbalist. You will not die in the, sh in the shrine of an idol worshiper in Jesus' name. If you are not healed in the house of God, how do you think you are going to be healed in the shrine of the devil? And as some people, they cannot endure a while and hold on to the promise of God and keep on confessing, I shall not die. I said, I shall not die, but I will live and declare the goodness of the Lord. They don't know how to confess that. They don't know how to stand on the word of God. But from today, you will stand. And then if your people come, look at your condition. We will carry you somewhere. No, you will not carry me anywhere. I said you will not carry me anywhere. I will stay with the Lord. But look at your condition. Come back next week, it will have changed. My condition will change. My situation will change. They will not carry you anywhere in Jesus' name. Now somebody in our church, he was sick in one of the regions. And after he was sick, the people there prayed and he was still sick and then his people came and said look at your condition we're carrying you away I said you're my people if you say so i'm in your hand not in the hand of christ i'm in the hand of christ i said i'm in the hand of christ if you say so i'm in your hand and they carried him and then the members of the church came and said, Where are you going? Where are you going? They said, It's my people. It's my people. When I get well, where they carry me to, I will come back. I will still serve the Lord. I know the word of God. This one is temporary. I will come back. And I carried him to the shrine. And the deceiver there joined this and this together giving him charcoal and you know something they burn together in the process he died there where do you want to die i said where do you want to die in a shrine keep on coming miracle will touch you we're coming to luke chapter 14 in Luke chapter 14, verse 24, strive to enter in at a straight gate.
strive to enter in. There are things that will try to pull you back. There are things that will try to hinder you. There are things that will try to pin you down, not to move forward. It says strive. You have to fight against whatever will hinder you from getting in. Strive to enter in at the straight gate. For many, I say unto you, will seek to enter in and shall not be able. Why? They're trying to enter in without repentance. Oh God, save me. Oh God, save me. Oh God, save me. And they are not able to enter in. They're trying to enter in with all the bags of gold and silver and money that they have stolen. And they want to still get in with all the money. The covetousness is still there. The greed is, not the, is still there. Some will try to enter in. In fact, many, I say unto you, will seek to enter in and shall not be able. The people who think that we enter into the kingdom by just raising up our hands. No repentance. No turning away from sin. No abandoning all the hard drugs. No quitting the gang they belong to and all the nightclubs that are still in their schedule. It's and they just raise up their hand. Yes, I belong to Christ. They try to enter in, they are not able. And after raising up their hands, after saying prayer, after the preacher, yet their lives are not different from what they were. It says in verse 25, when once the master of the house is risen up and a shot to the door, and ye begin to stand without and to knock at the door, saying, Lord, Lord, open unto us. And he shall say unto you, he shall answer and say unto you, I know you not whence ye are. Open to us. It's time to get to heaven. Now we have come, open the door of heaven. We want to enter in. Then shall ye begin to say, We have eaten and drunk in thy presence. You know what that means? They came to the retreat where Christ was. And Christ multiplied the bread. And they ate. And they, he gave them water. And they drank. And then they collected the fragments, 12 baskets remaining. It says, we have eaten and drunk in thy presence. And thou hast taught in our streets. We listen to your teaching. We were there. Look at verse 27. But he shall say, I tell you, I know you not whence ye are. Depart from me, all ye workers of iniquity. The people who come to gatherings like this and the iniquity in their hearts, they put that in the corner of their heart. Let us pray, they rise up. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord. They pray, they pray, they pray. But they keep on hiding that other sin in the corner of their heart. That one will not come out. That one will not be repented of. That one will not be forsaken. But they pray, they pray, and they pray. And the, you know, minister leading us in prayer, say, pray, pray, pray. And we keep on praying. But the real prayer, they will not pray. I know I am a sinner. These are the sins of my life. And these are the things I've been carrying about. I drop them at the feet of Christ and I'm not going to go back to my vomit Lord forgive me Lord cleanse me Lord change my life and give me the grace to go and see no more they don't pray that kind of prayer but they pray pray and pray they shout shout and shout and Jesus said yes I taught in your streets yes your edge the bread and you drank the water but i tell you i know you're not once here 
depart from me, all ye that walk in equity. Verse 28. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. That's what Jesus said. It's Christ. He knows about the great beyond. He knows about what will happen to people who have not repented. He knows about people who are backsliding and have not been restored. He knows about people whose lives are dirty. He knows about people whose lives are sinful. But somebody will not allow them to settle their lives. And they came into the camp. Brother, brother, where have you been? we have been looking for you. Okay, go and do this, go and do this, and go and do that. And there's so much in activity that they will not settle their lives. And, um, you know, while the retreat is going on, messages are going on, they're picking this, they're picking that, they're doing this, they're doing that. And uh, their conscience telling them, all this work you're doing, what's going to be the end? All this ministry you're doing, what's going to be the end? Look at your life and look at how dirty you are. Uh, yes, I'll set you later, I'll set you later. If you're not able to settle in the midst of the people of God, while we're all praying, while the spirit of prayer is upon everybody, if you cannot settle now, when are you going to settle? When you're alone by yourself in your house, and then you're trying to pray and you're dozing and sleeping, and you're struggling you know, with sleep. It says, if you don't settle now, he'll tell you on the final day, all ye that walk in equity, depart from me. There shall be weeping and gnashing of tears. When you shall see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God. And you yourselves thrust out. And they shall come from the east, from the west, from the north and from the south. And shall sit down in the kingdom of god he wants us to take the way the way that leads to life everlasting we're looking at second timothy chapter four second timothy chapter four from verse one i charge thee therefore he's talking to timothy a minister a preacher and I was telling Timothy that in the days in which, he, in which he'll be ministering, there'll be challenges that will come upon preachers. The Spirit of God trying to control the preachers, and society trying to control the preachers, and the mind and the goal and the vision of the preacher himself trying to control him. It says, Timothy, I charge you therefore before God, and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom, preach the word, the word of God. The temptation will be that you preach what the people want to hear. They want to hear about, you know, material blessing, mundane things. They want to have all their hope in the things of this life. Therefore, Timothy, preach the word. That's the word of salvation. The word of repentance, the word of transformation, the words of renewal, the words of the strength and the grace and the mercy of God, the words of the new life, eternal life. Preach the word, be instant in season and out of season. It's saying, you know, when it's convenient, when it's not convenient, preach the word. When it's easy, when it's not easy, preach the word. When people are listening, when people are not willing to listen, preach the word. When people accept, when people reject, preach the word. Be instant in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort without long suffering and doctrine. There are times when rebuke is not acceptable to people go ahead and do it rebuke there are times when reprove correction is not acceptable to people don't mind the reaction reprove rebuke exhort with long suffering and doctrine for the time will come 
when they will not endure sound doctrine. The time will come when they will be dull of hearing. The time will come when they don't want the mission of their peculiar sin. They don't want the mission of their peculiar weakness. They don't want the mission of their peculiar uh, evil. It says that time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lusts, they shall heed to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and they shall be turned unto fables. Timothy, at such a time, they want to hear about motivation, and they want to hear some good, good stories. They want to hear things that will lift them up emotionally. And they are turned to fables, deception, and lies, and stories of preachers. It says at such a time, preach the word. Verse 5, watch thou in all things. Endure afflictions. Endure afflictions. If affliction comes to you, as a result of preaching the word, stay right there and deal. And if difficulties come, if persecutions come, because you are earnestly contending for the faith, once delivered on those saints, endure afflictions. Do the work of an evangelist. Don't say they will not listen, they will not be converted. They will not respond. Therefore, I'm going to stay back. Do the work of an evangelist. Make full proof of thy ministry. For I am now ready to be offered. The time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. You'll fight a good fight. I said you'll fight a good fight. I have finished my course. You'll keep on. You'll go on until you finish in Jesus' name. I have kept the faith. You'll keep the faith. You'll be faithful. You'll be righteous. You'll hold fast unto the end. You'll be steadfast in Jesus' name. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. He was very sure, very sure. He said, I see it in my heart. The Spirit of God is bearing witness. I've not left anything undone which I should do. And I've not done anything I shouldn't have done. I've not left any place where I should have gone without going there. I've not left any soul I ought to touch, I ought to reach that I've not reached. I've not left anyone in darkness, anyone in deception. I've told everyone that came across my way or that I came across their way. I've told them the truth of the gospel. Henceforth, there's laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but to all them that love his appearing i pray you'll be counted among the people in jesus name the love is appearing then you are going to follow the lord in the new and the living way to the heavenly country we're looking at hebrews chapter 11 hebrews chapter 11 i'm reading here from verse 8 Hebrews chapter 11, reading from verse 8. Here is the way, the highway, the holy way, the righteous way that leads to heaven. It tells us in chapter 11 of Hebrews, verse 8. Hebrews, verse 8, by faith Abraham when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance what's the next word there what's the next word there say it for your neighbor to hear obeyed and he went out not knowing 
whither he went. The Lord called him. And the word of God says, he obeyed. That's the way of the Lord. It's the way of obedience. It's the way that leads home to heaven. That's the new and the living way. We're looking at Jeremiah chapter 7. Jeremiah chapter 7. I'm reading from verse 23. Jeremiah chapter, 20, chapter 7 verse 23. But this thing commanded I them, saying, Obey my voice. That's the way, the way that leads to the very heart of God. The way that leads to the very city of heaven. This thing commanded I them, saying, Obey my voice, and I will be your God. And ye shall be my people, and walk ye in all my ways. In the way of obedience that I have commanded you, that she may dwell, that she may be well with you. Genesis chapter 22. The way he wants us to follow in your home, in your place of work, that you'll not compromise. That you follow the way of holiness, the highway of righteousness, anywhere you are, whatever others are doing, others may, I cannot, because they are not thinking of heaven, but you are thinking of heaven. In Genesis chapter 22, reading from verse 18, Genesis 22, verse 18, and I see and in thy sea shall all nations of the earth be blessed because tell me thou hast obeyed my voice that's that's the way of the lord when you are saved when you are called and you respond to that call the call to repentance and the call to salvation you follow the way of obedience. Chapter 19 of Exodus. Exodus chapter 19. I'm reading from verse 5. Now therefore, if you will obey my voice indeed. You know, God gives no license for anybody to anybody to disregard him, to disobey him, to dishonor him, and to do the way he wants in his kingdom if we're going to get to that heavenly kingdom is the way of obedience now therefore if you will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant then shall you be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people for all the earth is mine chapter 23 of exodus exodus 23 Verse 22, but if thou shalt indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak, obey his voice and do all that I speak, then I will be an enemy unto your enemies and an adversary unto thine adversaries. Verse 22. 25 and he shall serve the Lord your God and he shall bless thy bread and he hear the amen? amen and thy water and I will take sickness away from the midst of thee Deuteronomy chapter 13 in Deuteronomy chapter 13 I'm reading verse 4, but I'm going to start from verse 1. Deuteronomy chapter 13, we're going to verse 4, but we're starting from verse 1. If there arise among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams, and giveth thee a sign or a wonder, and the sign or the wonder come to pass, 
whereof he speak unto thee, saying, Let us go after other gods which thou hast not known. Let us serve them. Thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that prophet. You will not listen to them. Or that dreamer of dreams. For the Lord your God proves you to know whether ye love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Ye shall walk after the Lord your God and fear him. Don't fear man, fear him. And keep his commandments. And uh, tell me, tell me as if you are going to do it. Obey his voice, and ye shall serve him and cleave unto him. That prophet or that dreamer of dreams shall be put to death. That means now you'll count him as dead out of your life. A dead man, a dead woman does not have any influence on your life. You'll not let him have any influence on your life. You find the word of God. And the Lord says, this is the way, walk ye therein. And then the so-called prophet, another prophet, another preacher, another pastor, whatever his title, and he comes to you to walk in the way that is different from the way the Lord has commanded. If you're going to the city of God, if you're going to heaven, you're not listening to that prophet or dreamer of dreams because he has spoken to turn you away from the Lord your God, which brought you out of the land of Egypt and redeemed you out of the house of bondage to trust thee out of the way. He wants you to backslide. That woman that comes to influence you, contrary to what you are learning, contrary to what you are hearing, she wants to turn you away from the way of the Lord. That man that comes to you to turn you away from the teaching of the word of God, from the path of obedience. He wants to turn you away out of the way which the Lord thy God has commanded thee to walk in. So shall thou put evil away from the midst of thee. For Samuel chapter 15 reading from verse 22 for samuel chapter 15 reading from verse 22 and samuel said as the lord has great delight in bond offering and sacrifices as seen obeying the word of the lord and you need to know that as a child of god Whatever dedication anybody manifests, whatever sacrifice anybody offers, if you find that with that dedication, with that so-called consecration, the fellow is not obedient to the word of God. You understand that that dedication is nothing, it's of no value. As the Lord has great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices, as in obeying the voice of the Lord, behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to hearken than the fat of rams. For rebellion is as the skin as the sin of witchcraft. You know, if they accuse some people of witchcraft, they will, you know, do anything to say, "I'm not a witch. I'm not a witch." about rebellion in the sight of God they are classified together and stubbornness as iniquity and idolatry stubbornness and idolatry in the sight of God they are classified together because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord he has also rejected thee from being king he wants us to be obedient unto his word. It's the way of obedience that leads home to heaven. Job chapter 36. In Job chapter 36, I'm reading from verse 11. If they obey 
and serve him. They shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasures. But if they obey not, they shall perish by the sword. The disobedient, if he dies in that condition, will perish, will not go to heaven. And they shall die without knowledge. And he goes on to say, but the hypocrites in heart, he up wrath. They cry not when he bindeth them, when he chastises them, when he corrects them. They cry not. The Lord is telling us if we are on our way to heaven, somebody there, I must see you in heaven. Will you be there? I said, will you be there? You'll be there in Jesus' name. What does it take? Look at verse uh, Jeremiah. We're looking at Jeremiah chapter 26. In Jeremiah chapter 26, I'm reading from verse 3. If so be that they hack in and turn every man from his evil way, that I may repent me of the evil which I purpose to do unto them, because of their evil doings. Therefore, verse 13 now, verse 13, therefore now, amend your ways and your doings, and obey the voice of the Lord your God. That's evidence we are dear children of God, we are beloved children of God, and we are walking in the way that leads to life eternal. I made your ways, I made your doings, and obey the voice of the Lord your God. And the Lord will repent him of the evil which he pronounced against you. We're coming to Acts chapter 5. Acts chapter 5, reading from verse 28. Acts chapter 5, verse 28, saying, Did we not strictly command you that you should not teach in this name? Here were people that we can call bullies. Here were people, oppressors. There were people, they had religious authority and religious power. The Lord Jesus had commanded the disciples as to what to do and what to preach. But this one came and they wanted to have higher authority than Christ. And they said to the apostles, did we not straightly command you? Don't you know our position, our authority, that they should not teach in this name? And behold, ye have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine, and intend to bring this man's blood upon us. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, Can you read it with me? One, two, three, go. If you are saved, can you read that? If you have been converted and you are not going to listen to any contrary voice, can you say that from the depth of your heart? If that's going to be your conviction, your confession, and your commitment at home, in the place of work, even in the church, anywhere, everywhere, can you read that with confidence? Some people may come to you. Do this, do this. Don't just rush and begin to do things. How does that compare with the word of God? How does that compare with my consecration and with my commitment? And then you will tell yourself, you don't have to tell them. You don't have to shout it on them. You will shout it inside your heart to yourself. I ought to be God rather than men. Whatever men they are and whatever the authority. And God will give you the grace in Jesus' name. For 32, 
and we are witnesses of these things and so is also the Holy Ghost whom God has given to them that do what? Obey him. You cannot retain salvation without obeying him. You cannot retain sanctification without obeying him. You cannot have the power of the Holy Ghost without obeying him. We are witnesses of these things. And so also is the Holy Ghost whom God has given to them that obey him. Romans chapter 6. In Romans chapter 6, I'm reading from verse 16. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are, to whom ye obey, when you leave the retreat and you go back home, the word of God will follow you back home. These messages will follow you back home. The spirit of the living God will follow you back home. Anybody you meet at home, Jesus is greater than that person. Anyone you meet back at home, the Holy Ghost is greater than that person. Anyone in the church, a minister, a leader, a sectional leader, the Holy Ghost is greater than that sectional leader. Anyone is being converted for a long time, you met him in the church, and he comes to you, and he said, this is what to do. The Holy Ghost will remind you of the reaching word of God. And the Holy Ghost is greater than everyone. Anyone that wants to prove greater than Christ and greater than the Holy Ghost and wants to have a greater authority in your life, that one is an antichrist. You will not obey an antichrist. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves, servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death, of obedience unto righteousness, but God be thanked that ye were servants in the past of sin, but ye have obeyed the, and ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered unto you. You will obey the Lord. You'll obey the word of God. That's the reason he has given us the word. That's the reason he has given us salvation. And that salvation helps us and grants us the strength and the power to be obedient unto his word. I will obey. I said, I will obey. Anywhere and everywhere, You'll obey in Jesus' name. Look up here for a moment. Without that obedience on my part from my early Christian life, you will not be here. I will not be here talking to you. I had a father, natural father, powerful firm authoritative and when he said do this you have to do that that was my father we we're going to a particular church and i saw we go on sunday if we had any problem during the week my father will you know go the natural way the native way if we children were sick, he'll give us a kind of, you know, concoction. When I was very young, I was born again. But I began to read the Bible. And I saw, this is wrong. I saw they'll give me those things. I would drop them somewhere. I couldn't tell him that, you know, I wasn't going to use that. Anymore. I wasn't born again. And then I became born again. And then I went to my father. I said, Dad, you know what? Now I am born again. 
Somebody help me shout, Amen. Amen. And then I said, No more of this, no more of this, no more of that. For the first time in my life, I could say no to what was wrong. That was my father. And then eventually, when he looked at the way I spoke, he understood a change had taken place in my heart on the basis of understanding God has spoken to me, I was going to obey. Then I happened to be under an atheist, my principal. That was another man, a great figure in my life. And that man was not an ordinary atheist, he was a militant atheist. And he told all the members of staff, he said, this is what you do. Now I was born again when I was a student in that school. I wasn't born again as a student. And I did quite a lot of things. Number one thing, I went back to the principal. And I confessed and made restitution of all the things that I did as a student. And then eventually I became a teacher there. And all the other teachers, I tell them, come on Sunday. Nobody goes anywhere. We have this work to do on Sunday. And then on Saturday, if we started that work, I'll say, sir, tomorrow Sunday, I am a Christian. I worship God on Sunday from early morning to late at night. And then I will not be there on Sunday. I'll go to church. I come back on Monday, and then I continue my work. And all my students that I taught in the scripture union, I told them, you're born again. Here is what you do under the principle that rejected our faith and we said this is what we were going to do and i stood obedience is what has carried me thus far number one my earthly father militant great authoritative but obedience was the order of my life number two my principal in the school and the one that employed me after I came out of university and even before going to university, obedience was the order of the day. And then, number three, man in my life, a militant preacher, a militant pastor, the pastor, the overseer of our own church when I was still in that church. And then they were not, they didn't agree with evangelism. And I saw the word of God and it says, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And then I started a Bible study. And then I started evangelism. I was still going to church. I didn't think that anything would happen because here is Bible. And then the overseer called me and said, you know what you're doing? You want to have a church within a church? I said, what does that mean? church within a church did i create any church inside here he said you are preaching oh i said of course and you're going out everywhere and you are telling people preaching the boss and preach everywhere i said of course he said we don't accept that here i said so you don't accept the whole bible here he said that is not their doctrine i said but look at the bible go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature and he said this is not play listen to me if you continue and you do this which i have told you not to do and you're quoting bible to me what will happen we will cast you out of our church I said, go ahead and do it. And I kept on obeying the word of God. Eventually, we're talking about something now that took place 41 and a half years ago, long, long time ago. And then they announced my name and they said I wasn't a member of that church anymore. I didn't recount, I didn't compromise, I didn't say, all my friends were there. I had no friends any other place. And the only people I knew were in that place. It was an isolation. It was loneliness. But I said, loneliness, isolation, whatever, I am going to obey the word of God. That's what brought deeper life, Bible church, deeper Christian life ministry. That's why you are here today. The obedience of one man. 
has made this possible all over our country we're still standing on that holiness without which no man shall see the lord all the countries of africa were standing on this word of god follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the lord i have suffered so much for these obedience in my early years at home at school and in church and now that year my years are running to close i'm older now i'm closer to the end than i was 40 41 years ago the whole word of god while i remain alive whatever the challenge whatever the persecution whatever the reaction I will continue to the very end and you will continue to the very end in jesus name like father like son like father like daughter like father like children they came to me and they said this is not the way i opened the bible to them i said this is the way and I disobeyed anything that was not according to the consecration that I put on my hands or the plow. I'm not looking back. And I'm still like that today. After I was converted in 1964, 1964 to this time, calculate, is a long, long time. And yet I have remained on the word. I'm going to be obedient unto the word until I die. I pass it to you now. That same courage, I pass it to you. That same conviction, I pass it to you. That same dedication, if deeper life is going to remain as deeper life, you are going to be obedient to the word in Jesus' name. Romans, Romans chapter 16. I'm reading from verse 26. Romans chapter 16 verse 26 but now is made manifest and by the scriptures of the prophets according to the commandment of the everlasting god made known to all nations for the obedience of faith for the obedience of faith for the obedience of faith say so you have faith in christ he has called you to a life of obedience this is the way walk here therein the grace to obey and the grace to live according to the word of the lord that grace will be abundant in your life in jesus name as you pray and ask for more grace the lord is telling you right now whatever your condition whatever family you came from and whatever um, kind of section you belong to in the church you'll obey the lord implicitly you'll obey the lord faithfully and you'll obey the lord without turning back and you'll find the grace of god will be sufficient in your life in jesus name is that true Will that be fulfilled? Are you going to have the same grace that your pastor has? Rise up and tell the Lord. It will take prayer, it will take prayer, it will take prayer. Tell the Lord, tell the Lord. Oh Lord, here I am. Nothing will drive me back. Nothing will dissuade me. Nothing will, will I hold back. I'm going to obey the Lord. Obey him in repentance. I did. Obey him in restitution. I did obey him in consecration. I did obey him in faithfulness. And de I did obey him. Obey him. Tell him to give you the grace. Grace to obey. Grace to live according to his word. No fear. No fear. No timidity. No matter who the people are trying to make you go the way of compromise you say no i've laid my hands on the plow i will not turn back i've laid my hands on the plow i will not turn back tell the lord tell the lord whatever the persecution i will obey the lord i'm born again i want to get to heaven i've been born again it's not child's play. By being born again, 
It's not theory. Something real. And I will follow the way of the Lord. I will follow the way of the Lord. The way of salvation is the way of righteousness, is the way of holiness. Standing firm. Standing firm. You might have to say no to your father. Have to say no to your mother. There may be some people, they say they're your father in the Lord. And they want to turn you back from the way of holiness. You might have to say no to your father in the Lord. If he wants to, comp to compromise. Your mommy, mother in the Lord, mother in Israel. If she wants to turn you away from the way of righteousness. You might have to say no. A friend, but some friend, you might have to say no. If he wants to turn you away from the way of holiness, righteousness, and obedience. A so-called dedicated person. If it wants to influence you. Negative. Against the teaching of the word of God. The time has come. For you to have the grace. The strength. To say no. Obedience to the word of God, not looking at anybody's face, that's what brought me to where I am today. That's what brought the church to where it is today. And if anybody wants to pull you out because of money, because of influence, because of whatever you are gaining from them, be willing to live and die without their money. Be willing to live and die without their help. Say heaven is more important to me. I will obey the word of God. Let your salvation be real. Salvation that is willing to live in righteousness. Salvation that is willing to do restitution. Salvation that grants you the grace to go and sin no more. Salvation that is recognized by angels of God in heaven. Real salvation. Biblical scriptural salvation that gives you backbone
gives you conviction. The salvation that plants your feet in the kingdom and the winds that blow and the storms that come are not strong enough to shift you from that solid ground. Let the blood of Jesus cleanse you. Let the Spirit of God strengthen you. Let obedience be your watchword, the central word in your life. Live for Christ. Come with me. Live for Christ. Don't have any friend that will turn you away from the way to heaven. Be willing to separate from them. Don't be committed to any church, any denomination. Where they are not preaching the totality of the word of God. My friends are there. My relatives are there. The pastor there knows me personally. But talking about heaven. He cannot carry you to heaven. On the wings of fellowship and friendship without holiness. Come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. Whatever you lose on earth, the Lord will give you multiplied falls. Obey the Lord when you are born again as only when it's possible. In all things, at all times, whatever the issues in your life, let your action, character, behavior demonstrate obedience to the Lord